Good morning, good evening, good afternoon from wherever you're joining us. Karibu sana and welcome. Uh, my name is Bismarck Lumumba and I'll be, and welcome to the Teens Book Club. Uh, today we are going to be discussing the book, uh, When God Says, Remember. But before we get into it, uh, let's say a prayer. Dear Father in heaven, O oh Lord God, we come before you, Father, this time. We'd like to thank you so much, O oh Father, for an opportunity to come here and to read your word. Now, Father, please be with us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, ladies and gentlemen, today we'll be discussing chapter 5, an advance on eternity. And with me here, I have Subira to help me. Subira, say hi. Hello. My name is Subira, and I'm a teen. I'm so excited to dive into this chapter. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So I'll just proceed by giving a short introduction on uh, chapter 5, an advance on eternity. So Mark Finley, first of all, introduces us to the concept that we are one that every single person in this world was created by God, and that essentially we are from one family. And he quotes a wonderful verse in the book of Acts chapter 17, which says, and I'll read it, Acts chapter 17, verse 24 to 26, it says, God, who made the world and everything in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, uh, does not dwell in the temples made with hands, nor is he worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything, since he gives life to all breath mm -hmm. and to all things. Verse 26, note, he says, and he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on the face of the earth and has determined their pre-appointed times and their boundaries and their dwellings. So despite the differences that we might see uh, uh, in regard to who we are, you know, day to day, the differences that we might see in each other, God has made each and one of us from one blood. And essentially, the true sense of self-worth, the true identity of all human beings stems from creation. Mm. You know, indeed, it's pointed out that creation provides us with a sense of being. You know, creation provides us with our origin story, the greatest origin story ever told. Mm. That we are created by one God and that he has placed us here on us uh, mm. intentionally, right? He contrasts that with the story of evolution, you know? And he says that evolution provides no moral ethic for our being. Yes. Evolution provides no uh, uh, origin for us. In fact, if anything, it says that our being is all an accident, right? Mm -hmm. And so, just to bring in Subira uh, shortly, I just had a question for you, uh, Subira. Um, you know, now, having seen that God has provided us uh, uh, with this ethic of creation, uh, and, and particularly with the Sabbath. How does the Sabbath come in as a, as a symbol of God's eternal power and creative power as well, and his authority over us? Okay, first of all, this is an amazing chapter, mm -hmm. an advance on eternity. Mm -hmm. And so I would like to think that we have this advance on eternity when we are connected to Christ. Eternity is now. See, Mark Finley state that eternity is not just a future promise, but of present reality. And that comes with a transformative power. We are transformed when we're living connected to Christ. And there's a hope and assurance. So our concept of a, God's grace and God's love mm -hmm. gives us an advance on eternal joy and eternal peace. But to really address your question and how the Sabbath acts not only as a symbol of God's eternal power, but also of salvation. See, I would like to think that the Sabbath invites believers to rest in the assurance of the complete and eternal power of God to save. And that's directly connected to salvation. See, Mark Finley states that it is a meaningful symbol of righteousness by faith and not legalism. And salvation is stemmed purely from our faith, mm -hmm. from the grace of God because of our faith. And so as we are in the week, we are seizing, we're constantly working on our salvation. Mm -hmm. That's our efforts. But the Sabbath gives us a pause. So we are seizing to create our own salvation based on our own efforts. It's a really deep reminder that we rest in him for our salvation. God has the power to send his loving son to die for our sins. And that salvation is brought to us because of his love. That's a very interesting point yeah. that you bring out there. Uh, and I think I do agree with it. You know, the, the, the fourth commandment essentially tells us 
that uh, we ought to remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy and that, you know, we're given the six days. But the reasoning behind it is that God rested on the Sabbath day yes. uh, and that he blessed it and then he sanctified it, you know, and that essentially the Sabbath day is uh, inherently etched, uh, inherently uh, etched with creation. Uh? I just wanted to ask, uh, uh, you know, is it a reassuring message to us uh, that we have that we have the Sabbath to remember uh, God's creation, you know, uh, the, the consistency of it all. And, you know, just week on a week by week basis that we are called to remember the Sabbath day and God's creative activity on it. Is it reassuring? Yeah. How reassuring do you think that is for us? I think it's absolutely reassuring in the sense of God has been steadfast. His consistency has been demonstrated to us by his love, mm -hmm. his care, his grace, his judgment as well. But now he's calling for our consistency. Mm -hmm. And our consistency requires allegiance. And so that weekly reminder of his relationship with us, mm -hmm. of his redemption, is amazing mm -hmm. and reassuring of our actual salvation. Um, we talked, you, look, you talked about how it is both the memorial of Cre the creation, mm. but also of our salvation. To have the Sabbath day is to break and pause, to stand in awe of God's care and empathy for humanity. Yeah, that's uh, very good. Now, just turning back uh, to the chapter that, you know, the, 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 the title of the chapter is An Advance on Eternity. Yeah. Uh, and just looking at, at now, uh, the book of Revelation, chapter 6, verse 7. And this is, you know, the three angels' message. Uh, the first angel message, I'll just read it for you. Uh, it says, Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, and tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea, and the springs of water. So ideally, you know, even in that last message, still proclaiming God as the creator, uh, proclaiming that we ought to worship him because of his creative power. Uh, and, 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 and essentially that uh, his, his ability to create, his, his creative work has necessitated us to worship mm. him. And, and that now we are, we are his and we ought to worship him because of that particular aspect. I but... Uh, turn oh, yes. back mm -hmm. to Sibira. I don't know if you had a question on that, but I just wanted to bring now um, another aspect of, of, of the Sabbath and salvation. Okay. You know, um, now, ideally, I know that you've spoken about uh, the Sabbath and salvation being, uh, the Sabbath being a symbol of salvation. Um, but particularly, I just wanted to ask, you know, um, looking at even uh, in the book of Revelation, chapter 22, when God promises that even in the new earth we'll keep the Sabbath, uh, um, uh, not only is it, is, it, is it a part of God's own ability to, to, to create, but also a part of God's own ability to save. Yes. Uh, and I don't know if you had any insight on that or made any addition to that as well. Right. Um, I think it's w well said. Absolutely. And so as we are keeping the Sabbath day, what is happening is that we're not just engaging in this you know, this mundane activity of going to church and saying hello to people and fellow believers. Fellowship is necessary, mm -hmm. but it's also resting in God's power to save. Resting in the fact that we are without mm -hmm. and God can actually transform us mm -hmm. and, and renew us and rejuvenate this relationship. And so church is always described, I think, in teens class as well as mm -hmm. a sick, as a hospital. Mm -hmm. Um, where patients are here. Mm -hmm. We are patients. Mm -hmm. We are people who need care, who need attention. Mm -hmm. um, and so God is really going through the surgical process of you are granted a free consultation, if you will, every single week. Mm -hmm. And that consultation can consist of confession, of repentance, but most importantly, renewal. Mm -hmm. And so God's power to save allows us to depend more deeply on him. He is the great physician and he can renew our hearts because our hearts are in, its, are in their true wicked condition. But I'd also like to touch on something in the fact that who are we to not keep the Sabbath and mm -hmm. yet God is the Lord. Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath and he too kept the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. 
we look at Hebrews chapter 4, verse 9 to 10, mm -hmm. and it says, There remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. Mm -hmm. For anyone who enters God's rest also rests from their works, just as God did from his. Mm -hmm. And this is coming from a chapter of a Sabbath rest for the people of God. God rested and created this rest for us for physical, mental, spiritual renewal. Mm. And that was extremely intentional. And so as we progress in the chapters and see um, why the Sabbath is necessary, mm. let us not take man's word for it to change a day, to change a purpose, but recognize that God has the ultimate authority yeah. to implement rest in our lives, yeah. but most importantly, to save us. Yeah, yeah, great. I think, I think that's very insightful. Um, as we come to the close of just analyzing this chapter, I think there's a point there that uh, I'd just like us to touch on a chip or a snippet of eternity. The yes. Sabbath just being a moment of eternity. Mm. You know, God calls us to his rest, uh, as you have so rightly said. Uh, but that's also just a, a, a sort of a taste of how eternal life is going to be. Um, particularly uh, looking at, 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 at what has been said in, in Isaiah chapter 66, verse 23, and I'll just read it. Um, and it says that, you know, from new moon to new moon, if I can just paraphrase as I, as I, as I open it. Um, Isaiah chapter 66, verse 23, and it says, it sh And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, all flesh shall come to worship me, says the Lord. And so, Sibira, I just wanted to ask, and just to bring you in as we, as we, as we look to close, um, how does the Sabbath play into eternity? Mm. Uh, how is the Sabbath now, here on earth, where we are, a taste of eternity? Yeah. Yes, and so back to even our childhood, mm. like Sabbath school, have a little heaven down here. Mm -hmm. And I really want to paint this picture of how heaven will look like, Mm -hmm. We are not quite sure on the details, but we do know it is a great place. And most importantly, that dwelling in the presence of God is a greatest joy. And so God does never, never wants his people to lack the opportunity to be in his presence. And you see this as the Israelites. Um, in exile, even coming from the Persian Empire, God offered religious liberty. He allowed them to rebuild the temple. He allowed them to rebuild these walls to ensure that they have a place to convene with him. Indeed. And so what eternity looks like is being in the presence of God full fold. Mm -hmm. That experience is magnificent, if I would put a word. Yeah. And this glimpse of eternity, the Sabbath, is offering us a hint of what God's presence in, in, its, in its real true form looks like. But it is our choice to make. Indeed. As we choose God, Indeed. let us be aware of the everlasting promises that he has provided for us. Indeed, indeed. And so ladies and gentlemen, as you know, we look to close, the Sabbath is a sort of advance on eternity. You know, when you go to your boss and you ask for an advance on your salary, that's what God has really done with the Sabbath. You know, he has called us apart just uh, within a moment in time here mm. on earth to help us experience his rest and to help us remember his creative power and who he is to us, right? And so I just want to uh, uh, ask you and to really encourage you to pick up this book and read uh, When God Says Remember. Uh, and, 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 and just dive in and look at some of the insights that are there. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sabrina, do you have any closing remarks? Um, nothing much. I mm. think I pray that the rest of the Holy Spirit will engulf every single person here, everyone who's watching, um, and you as well. Mm. Me as well, <laughs> also. But just for us to reflect on what eternity looks like and what God presents because God has presented his case in such a beautiful manner that there is a devil too who seeks to deceive us. Mm -hmm. But there's a great, great hope that we can equally receive God's rest. Amen, amen. And with that, let's say a prayer. Dear Father in heaven, O Lord God, we come before you. Thank you so much, O Father, for an advance on eternity. Now, Father, as we part, be with us, keep us and protect us. In Jesus' name I, I pray. Amen. Amen. Join us again for chapter six for Bible answers to your questions.
Amen.